surfaces, the new alcohol alloys, the ink blowers, all sorts of cool stuff. So alcohol inks uh, are solvent-based ink, fast-drying ink, available in a bazillion colors now. No, really, we introduced 15 new colors in the alcohol world. And the, the great thing about these inks, I mean, they've been around since 2004 when I first launched them with Ranger. And, and in addition to not only the palette evolving, because it started with the Adirondack palette, but also the maker, how people are using them. You know, we went from just doing simple card making to mixed media, home decor, and now all of these great paintings and effects that people are doing. And so when we started talking about creating new colors for the line, I really kept that in mind. How are people using them today? How is today's maker using them? Well, a lot of artists are using 91% isopropyl alcohol or higher to actually dilute the color and pour it onto Yupo or different substrates to get those colors to blend. When you add isopropyl alcohol to alcohol ink, you are diluting the color, okay? You're not totally washing it out, but you're definitely diluting the color. And so with that, these 15 colors, we wanted to create really intense punches of color, the most vibrant color we put in the line. So I'll go through the swatches. I won't necessarily go through all 15 colors because there's a lot of swatches to go through, but there is a swatch board on the other side. I encourage you to take a photo of it, but just fanning through the swatch, you can see right away when there are new, is a new color because that really bold color, that's a new color. For example, that's gumball. Or when you go through the line, cranberry used to be our deepest red. Now we have rosewood which is like really intense. You get into yellows, we've added interesting colors like Dijon, which is kind of like a yellow, kind of meets green, not olive -y. but when in the world of alcohol ink, when you use it with something, it could either have a yellow property or a green property. You get into greens, we have really bright greens like Mojito, or really dark greens like Everglade. And that's what we wanted to keep in mind, even something teal, because I know, yeah. I know. See the whole little mermaid thing over there? Yeah. yeah. We added Laguna because we wanted that color. We also added some great blues like Glacier. And, and that was the inspiration is how is today's maker? It doesn't mean you can't use them on cards like you've always done. It just means that the colors you're going to get are really going to be deep, vibrant, rich colors in, in your mate. Now, in addition to the colors, we've also introduced what's called an alcohol alloy. Now, there's five colors. I only have four left. I don't know what the other one is. But the alcohol alloy is a different kind of metallic, right? When we first launched metallics in the alcohol ink line, we launched mixatives. And mixatives are a metallic pigment in a solvent base designed to mix with the alcohol ink when you use it. It creates really great effects. I don't know if you can see that on the Yupo. But it's like a polished stone effect, right? It's designed to mix in with the ink and create these little veins of metallic. The alloy is a totally different kind of metallic. It is a leafing metallic that we use still has a solvent, but when you put it onto the surface, it's designed to clump. So instead of mixing with the ink, it's designed to like stay together and create a whole different effect of metallic over your background. So even on something like this is tile, it looks like there's leafing in there, but that is the alloy. That's the ink that does that. It creates these chunks, these fragments of metallic that go onto the surface. So any of these elements of metallic that you see, those are the alloys now. So the alloys are unique because in addition to spreading out the way we want a metallic to do, it'll just start grouping up in really cool areas. So I'm going to demo how, how that's to be used. So, so Well, that's the it's a million dollar question. In my opinion, as makers, I kind of feel like we're going to be done with this because I just know as a designer, I'm over that. Like, you know what I mean? If that's all we had, Okay, that's what we had, but because we have such a much better metallic, I can still get it to blend if I dilute it, but the fact that this is so much more intense than that. So Ranger's just going to watch the sales. Yeah, why would I? So, I mean, I said to Ranger, I'm like, guys, if you want to be done with mixatives, like, it's okay. We, like, we have yeah, something else now. Friends. I think, yeah, we've kind of moved on. We, you found a different kind of metallic. You found a different resin. Let's go. So I, I hope that they do that because I do feel that, if, it, if it's something better, like let's just focus our energy on that and try to, instead of trying to show the difference. Okay. But it is visually different. And when you see it, you're like, okay, why would I need that? But some people might still want subtle. I know painters that do it, they like that little subtle fleck. I'm for alloys all the way. In addition to that, there's different substrates. And I've worked on a lot of substrates. Yupo, of course, is my favorite. It's a synthetic paper, it's a plastic paper. We have it in white, we have it in translucent, we have it in heavy stock. The nice thing about this, it's very forgiving substrate. You can use it. It floats color completely different than gloss paper does. We also have 
uh, these hardcore art panels. This is a, an MDF wood that is laminated with vinyl on both sides. It makes great little art pieces. We have them in squares and rectangles. In this show, we launched these wonderful hexagons. So you can use them to stamp on. You can add color in the background. You can add resin. We have a new alcohol resin kit that just allows you to combine equal parts of this, mix it up, pour it over the top, self-leveling, 24 hours, you have a hard resin surface. And it doesn't affect the alcohol. It doesn't smear them, it doesn't alter the color. It looks, I like, it looks like glass. It looks like glass. It's really beautiful. Uh, in fact, the resin, I'm going to steal my... <laughs> spotlight thing for Ranger. We do it every year where you have to make something. And I needed to make something for Distress and for alcohol. Now for Distress, I had to make a project and mine has more colors than anything. You'd be proud. I use, I use 64 colors of it. And here's why, right? So we had to choose, each designer got to choose five makers just at random of people that had a certain style, an identifiable style. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick Stacy. She's going to do color. Paula, she'll do soft and vintage. Emma will be floral. I knew Zoe was going to be grungy, and I knew McGuire, Jennifer McGuire, was going to be color. Okay? Paula, brown. Stacy, brown. Emma, brown. Zoe, brown. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm the brown guy. Like, everyone else was supposed to be different colors. So I thought, well, now I need to just pull out all this up. So I did all the colors. So when it came to alcohol ink, I thought, well, I'm not really a painter. I'm not an alcohol ink painter person. So I took one of the hardcore panels, put inks on there, put alloys on there, moved them around, which I'll talk about the blower got all those colors and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder how this resin is going to work. Because Ranger said, we're adding this resin to your line, this alcohol resin. I'm like, I've never really worked with resin. I don't know what it does. And people are going to say, how does it work with this? I have no idea. So I took the scrap. I went in and did alcohol lifting. I went and did lifting with the stencil. I took archival. I stamped it once, twice, three times, three generations. I did some rub-ons. And then I'm like, okay, I splattered it to see if the resin would make this ink run. Then when I was done, I let it dry. I poured the resin. I'll show you the resin. <laughs> this is the resin. So the clear resin kit comes with two bottles, A and B. And all you do is you take equal parts in a cup, mix it up, five minutes, pour it over the top, self levels. You can pop the bubbles with a heat tool or a torch, right? So if you have a butane torch, you can do that or use a heat tool to get the bubbles to pop. 24 hours, that's it. So this entire piece is done with one cup of this, which I thought was, I thought I would have to pour several of it. You pour it on, take the spatula, and pull it to the edge. But I just did this as a test piece to see like how, how would the resin work? Would the resin eat the rub-ons? Would the resin smear archival? Would the lifting disappear? And when I was done the next day and I came to look at my sample, I'm like, my project's done. <laughs> so this was never even a project, but Dina's like, your composition is amazing, you're this and like, that was to totally self-leveling. I literally, all you have to do on resin is get it to its edge okay. because it won't overtake a dry area is okay. what I found. Like if you if you spread around but you left a pocket, I would assume that the resin would kind of pull in. If you had a lot of resin, it might, but it really doesn't. It just kind of sits where it is. So I just pulled it to the edge. She's doing some dancing back there. <laughs> She says she demos an interpretive dance. Like, okay. <laughs> so I pulled this to the edge and then yeah, it's self-leveled and like that was it. So that's one layer of resin, which is awesome. So I love the fact. Thanks. So I love the fact that we can it's really amazing. Not knowing resin, I'm like, how much do I have to make? Like how much do you gotta pour on there? And literally one cup did the whole thing. So you can resin over wood or papers or fabric, metals, anything like that. It's pretty awesome. So that is my resin piece. So we're gonna do some demos using the inks, the alloys, and this silly little tool. We had a marker spritzer. So the blower is just a soft rubber ball, has these little ridges so it just doesn't roll off the table and an air opening. 
Now, I'll use it, I'll pass it around because everyone wants to squeeze it. It is a very soft rubber ball, okay? It's very soft because we want to push this ink around with air. And the reason I did it is again, there's different ways that we can apply alcohol ink. We can use an ink tool, we can use a paintbrush, we can do a lot of different things, but an air blower is going to allow us to create a more organic movement of our inks. Another thing to keep in mind, especially if you watch a lot of YouTube, I see people moving alcohol ink with a straw, and that is really unsafe because if you blow inks around, if you're really good about like exhaling and then lifting mm. your head up and actually breathing upright, you're good. But most people are down here blowing the inks and then inhaling air, and if you suck the fumes right off the surface, they are very toxic to you, all right? If you just use alcohol ink and you smell it, well, that's a bonus. That's like, woo, this is so much fun. But other than that, you shouldn't be inhaling alcohol ink off the surface. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with a piece of UFO. It could be a full sheet or part of a sheet. And I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, this is 91%, so 91 or higher. Now I'm gonna work on the media mat, so I'm gonna get rid of the craft mat. So I don't wanna use alcohol ink with this. And then I'm just gonna set up my colors. And I like to use the grid on here. It's kind of like a palette because I'm able to match up my caps later. I'm one of those people that I like the cap to match the bottle so I don't contaminate the different colors on there. That's just me. I'm just going to add, ooh, monsoon. That's a good color. I'll probably end up with all of them. You never know. But here's what's unique. When I go and shake the color into this alcohol, see how the color reacts different on Yupo than it does sitting in this isopropyl. The isopropyl alcohol actually suspends the alcohol in different layers. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So let's just throw on a few colors to start. And we're going to take that air blow and we're going to just start moving those colors around. Okay? And when I move those around, you're going to see all of those layers underneath. You're going to see that pink is still under there. You're going to see that blue under there. You're going to see that teal under there because that alcohol keeps all those colors separate and it's allowing me to move around. I'm basically just painting with air. If you want to use the alloy, the alloys are really intense. This is a leafing metallic. So when I go and place this down, one drop is going to cover a very large area, right? Now you can use the alloys with alcohol ink or with blending solution, but you need to use them with one of the two because these contain resin and isopropyl alcohol doesn't. So if you only use them with this, even though they'll dry, the metallic will rub off. But if you use even just a drop of blending solution, that's gonna be enough to set those metallics. And you'll see that the alloy is really, really intense. They have such a rich metallic property. I'm just gonna go in and just add your alcohol. Yeah, it's really wild how these colors can move. And this blower is just allowing me, again, just to paint with air. See how I can break that up? So your alloys, you can see how as you add them, they always want to kind of go back to the party. They just want to gather together, but this blower is going to allow me just to mix and break that up. And you don't, you can see that when I'm using it, I'm just applying a little bit of air to get that movement. I don't have to go in and just, like we're not doing that, unless you want fireworks, I suppose, on your background. But this gives you so much more control because the isopropyl alcohol takes longer to dry. If you only did this with ink and blending solution, you are not going to get this play. Because blending solution has the same drying time of these inks, which is about 7 to 10 seconds. So by the time you did a little bit of movement, it's over. Now, when you're mixing it, you can always go back and throw in colors. The alcohol inks will always react with each other. So adding any color, any solvent, it's just going to go in and just give you a whole new play, a whole new float of color on there and those alloys will always stay together. So even though I introduce a new color, I can create a whole different layer and bring some of that pink back in. I love how I can pull color just with air instead of a brush. It's such a cool way that we can go in and add some color. So I'm gonna let this sit and just do its thing. If you give alcohol inks a chance to dry on their own, you're gonna get these interesting undertones that show up from the color versus drying it with a heat tool. Can you dry it with a heat tool? Sure. If you want to add another effect, we can also take alcohol and spray it. Mm. So you can take a mini mister and you can put isopropyl alcohol and you can spray it. But what you should never spray is this. This has resin, so this should never be airborne in a liquid form. If you happen to spray this, there again, that would be bad for you. It's toxic. Is there anything? I have a little bit in there. By spraying this kind of alcohol, you'll see on the background, I can create some really neat splatters just right into my alcohol ink. 
I can let it set. The longer it sets, like if I go in and just use the blower right here, I can get these pieces to actually look more like little sponge drops versus dots. So I was able to push that ink kind of back together. It creates a cool, cool pattern. So I'm gonna just let that do its thing. And I'll show you another like trick. An owl. It's just, oh, it's just like an owl. <laughs> I just love the look of that. I love the look of that metallic and all of those colors on there. But we'll talk about these rainbows. I learned this trick from Jennifer McGuire. I follow Jennifer McGuire. She does some crazy stuff. When I saw this, I was like, and that would be to apply alcohol ink with the protract. Like, I didn't even know what this was, I'll be honest. I'm like, is that like a Home Depot thing? Like, what is it used for? I'm, I know, whatever. I found mine at the dollar store. She's a I had teacher, no right? Idea. So. so this, just take a protractor, take a piece of Velcro, put it on the edge, take a piece of felt, put it over this. And this could be used for alcohol ink, distress, watercolor. It's just a quick way that we can go in and apply color. So I'm just going to take some colors and I'll add to this while she's chatting. <laughs> Alright. We're going to use a little Fiesta as well. Good, good pink color. Alright. So here we're just going to take this. Let me just feel this. It feels a little crusty. If the felt is crusty, it's not going to absorb ink and that's just a waste of good ink. So this is just felt from the craft store. Nothing special about it. And then you just fold it over the Velcro, and then you kind of have to like squeeze it into the little hooks. This was just neat because it's a cool way to apply a blend of colors. So although I'm going to show you kind of the rainbow, you could do this like with blues to create a bluish background or different earth tones, anything you want. So here we'll take this, we're going to add our ink colors. So I'll still take some different pinks. Mm -hmm. A little gumball, a little fiesta, then I'm gonna go in with some yellow, and I'll just do that that rainbow spectrum. There's a little Dijon. And let's take some mojito. I could use a mojito. <laughs> Why not? Use a little Laguna. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting the nib on and I am squeezing some of that color. Use a little glacier. And you can go all the way to the end of the felt if you wanted to. I'm just going to do just a short little rainbow here. This goes very important. I'm going to take this, just a piece of Yupo, and I'm just going to start swiping color, right? Quick way to blend. If I wanted to, I know, right? Seriously, I had that same reaction. I saw it and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, I didn't say freaking, I said something else, but I was just so... You know, it's one of those things that it just kind of stings you because you're like, that's so duh, but so brilliant. And I loved it. So like on Sparkle, I can go in and just add this color and I can blend this out. And when you put it on Sparkle, of course, that paper, as soon as the solvent hits, it's going to lose its sparkle. But once it dries, the sparkle comes back. So I can even take a heat tool. And as I dry it and that alcohol evaporates, you're gonna see it goes right back to a beautiful sparkly paper, right? So we have that colored glittery paper. If you want something that's a little bit more distressed, right? This kind of look, all I did was do this swipe, take my alcohol and just go in and spray that top and just let it drip. That's it. And just let it pull through that color. I'll show you over there too. Look at that. That is good right there. And then you're just letting that alcohol drip through. I know, isn't that crazy? I know. And you don't have to go against grain. You can go with it if you want. I think we even did some drips over there. And then once you're happy with it, we can dry it. Now, isopropyl alcohol thanks. dries really quick. So you'll see when the heat hits it, just that alcohol evaporates. You do not have to heat this. You can let it air dry. I'm just very impatient when I demo. Well, in life. Um, but you can even see that. If you wanted this color to just fade out, at any time you can go back and you can spray on more alcohol and that thing will fade out. But that's the, that's the effect that we can get. And that's how this is done on Sparkle. It's done the same way on a hardcore panel. So it's that same idea. I just went in, swiped the color, sprayed alcohol, let it drip. The only thing I did different between these two, I added resin. So it's really crazy how you can change the effects of all these. This one, same idea. This just happens to be stamped with lift ink, right? Because when we stamp with lift ink, we can lift off and create some background. 
So honestly, the, the sky's the limit on this. When we go in with different colors, even if I'm, I'm gonna play around with another alloy. I'm gonna go play around, oh, we'll do foundry. This will be good. Just playing around with different colors in the way this blower, I think, kind of moves the color. That's what I'm loving with these inks because you can just take your color. And the reason we want to start with that is, we, again, we want to give this ink something to sit in for a bit before we move it around. There's some monsoon, it's a little vineyard, there's some laguna, and then we're going to take a little bit of foundry. This is just, foundry is more like a platinum. Right? We'll do a couple of drips of that one. And we're just going to start moving these colors. It's just wild how just that little bit of air, you get a whole different color reveal underneath everything. To play for days. I know. It's like it makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. I really don't. <laughs> It doesn't, it just, yeah, it allows you to play in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. I, love, I have to be honest, I really didn't do much with isopropyl alcohol at first. Like when I was playing, I thought, ah, do I really want it? I mean, I have a blending solution, like why do I need that? And the more you start playing around with that alcohol, I mean, besides that, it's, I mean, it does smell quite a bit, but you get way more movement. I think you get way more interest in your depth than I ever did with blending solution before. It's just allowing me to move these inks uh, quite unique. I think just because that isopropyl, I mean, you can see how wet it still stays. You can see that kind of sizzle under there. That alloy is wanting to clump up. And even going over the top, you can see kind of that metallic sheen as I'm just bursting some air on there. Just a great look. Anytime I work on a background, I just like to play around with it, and then you can either cut out the part that you want, go in and add ink to the part that you think more needs layer, more. More layer, more layer. That's right, I know. <laughs> you're only as good as your next layer, right? That's it. You look at that and you're like, oh, I should do something different. That's cute. You can move it around. It's just, yeah, cool. I love that color. Foundry is like, that's my favorite color. Right now. Because depending on how the light hits it and what you pair it with, sometimes it looks gold, sometimes it looks silver. That's the the joy of platinum. <laughs> so I'll do some lifting real quick. I'll take this and just show you some lifts. Let's take a little bit of this. I won't use any alloy this time. I'll use whatever's close. And whenever I have it open, I'm going to use a little bit of rosewood. Rosewood means business. Rosewood is a very deep red. Almost like a mahogany. It's really, really good. Give us a nice dark color. I love these purple tones. I'm gonna go in and use a little bit more of that. It's yes, 91% or higher isopropyl alcohol. Yep. And that's what's gonna just really move this color around. And see all these undertones that you get when you start moving those layers? I think that's also something really unique about that blower is before when I would just stamp that ink, you just, I seem to just kind of keep getting muddy and muddy and muddy, but this is allowing me to, to reveal some totally different colors in there. We're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go uh, borrow the alcohol lifting pad from the display. Just borrow. We're already unwrapped it, so might as well. We're gonna do some lifting. I'm gonna dry this. Normally I would let this completely air dry just because I would want to see like what those drips would do, where would they move, but for the sake of the demo, I'm just gonna dry it. Because we do need this to be dry before we go in and lift it. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We'll take a stand. I don't know, I wasn't picking it up. Oh, there we go. That'll work. <laughs> I was behaving we'll myself. Okay. Hey, what is in here? Okay, we're just going to take a stamp and we'll take our background. So this background again has a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. And we're going to take Lift Ink. So Lift Ink is designed to lift an image from a slick surface. So we're just going to take that ink. We're going to stamp it off. We're going to 
ink this up. Now you have some options. I'm gonna get a piece of uh, porous paper. So glossy cardstocks, matte coated cardstock, anything coated that's not Yupo, because Yupo's plastic, but anything coated is gonna be highly porous when it comes to an image. So I'm just gonna take my stamp and I'll stamp it right into this ink. And I think I'm gonna go over all this colory area, right? So we'll place it down, stamp with purpose, you know, give it some pressure. You don't need to CPR it. If you have a stamping tool, use a stamping tool because the more pressure you add, the more we're gonna lift. We're gonna lift this off. Now the ink that was here has transferred to my stamp. And the cool thing about lifting, it's really designed to do this. But what we discovered is that the formulation that's in this ink actually created a barrier between the rubber stamp and the alcohol ink. Because normally if you try to put alcohol ink on a stamp, it's dry, you can't stamp with it. But this lift ink actually took this dry ink and made it wet again. So if I take it and transfer it to something porous, I'm able to stamp with any of my colors of alcohol ink. And I get exactly the same color and area that I lift it from. So where there's red, where there's blue. So this is now permanent, this is a permanent ink. So to be able to stamp in all these colors, you could stamp this on fabric, you could stamp it on wood, on paper, and these colors, as soon as it dries, is permanent because we stamped in alcohol. It doesn't damage your stamp in any way. It was a happy accident because it was really designed to do what I'm gonna show you, which is lift. So lift ink lifts the color, but you have to do the lifting. It was just the ink that put it on there. So you're gonna take something porous, a paper towel, and we're just gonna start dabbing. And what that's doing is it's gonna start lifting the color. So each time we just wanna get a clean area of something for us, and we're gonna dab around that lift. Look at it, dab. And you're really looking at your design. You kinda of see the image develop. It kinda of comes into focus. And all we're doing is we're gonna to continue to dab this. And once you see that you're not lifting a lot of color, then we can go in and buff this off. And I'm gonna show you how we use it with a stencil as well, because you can do this with a stencil in addition to a stamp. So then once we do that, I'm just gonna buff that off and now we've created that ghosted image. Really cool, it's done. But you don't always have to stamp the lift, you can just lift it and be done. But if you wanna add some other effect, we can take a stamp, a stencil. Let's see what we've done here now. How do you clean it up the stamp? You just use archival. So oh, okay. I use, yeah, sure. archival so cleaner. Yeah. yeah, archival cleaner really works the best, in my opinion, when it comes to cleaning it up. I use dots. I'll stick with bubbles. I was going, oh, I'll use this. I think Mario cleaned my sensors, didn't he? Is he back here cleaning him? He knows. Yeah. I was like, I really want to use that. All right. If you're going to use a stencil, I like to take a blending tool and a piece of foam. Excuse me one second. Thank you. I always bring out an, a few, but never enough. There we go. Thank you. And the reason I want to use foam is because felt is going to get caught up in the stencil, but you could also use a brush, right? If you use a stencil brush, that's going to work really, really well. I'll show you that in a minute. But we want to use the reinker for this, and here's why. If I go into my ink pad, I have to lift, but I have to go back and get more ink. And if you do that, you're going to contaminate your ink pad. This is going to give me enough ink by just taking a drop of the reinker. Okay? And this is the same reinker that is used on the ink pad anyway. And now I can go in. Put some of that lift ink right onto the foam and place it down and say, okay, I'm just going to go in and kind of lift this design. Maybe we're just going to go in this area just to show you. Obviously, you wouldn't do the same thing on, on this background. This is going to allow me to just go in and pounce through that stencil because we're getting some lift ink on there. We need to pick up a little bit more. Pick up some of that color. Because again, we're lifting it. So if that would have gone into the ink pad, the ink pad would no longer be clear and well, the whole magic trick doesn't work. So once we lift this off, we have to do the same thing we did with the stamp. Just take a paper towel and just start lifting the stencil top. So if anything for us will break through. Now, obviously on the stencil, the more you blend, the more you eat through, you could get it all the way down to white Yupo again. Or if you just wanted it very, very subtle, because maybe you were going to layer a flourish and then you were going to stamp something else, you could just take a small amount of lift ink and you can just fade your background instead of going all the way up, down to the core of Yupo. And the trick to this really is just look at your paper towel. If you're not picking up any color, you're good to go. But if you're still picking up color, 
if you start wiping through that, you'll blur everything out. You'll take the lift ink and you'll smear the whole design. That's not so there's our stencil pattern through there. Pretty cool. Really, really neat. Just a great way to go in and use it. Here's a tip just on stenciling, stenciling 101. I shared this during Facebook Live and people seem to really dig it. And I probably can't find my sample now that I mentioned it, but I'll see. Oh, I have them right here. One thing that um, is important to remember in our creative world, different tools do different things. For example, a stencil. This is a stencil and a blending tool. Going through that, it's gonna blend, it's gonna create a beautiful look through a stencil. This is the same stencil using a brush, right? I happen to use a distress brush, but you can use any kind of inking brush. A brush is always going to get closer to your stencil material. It's going to make more detail of your stencil instead of having wide marks. So for example, if you were lifting a stencil, you could use a brush with lifting. You don't have to use the blending tool. Same thing like on that doodle design. Blending tool, brush. And the brush just shows so much more detail of that design than the foam ever will. So even if you're doing lifting, if you want that really great detail, you could go in and just take your distress brushes, go into your lifting, go through there and lift that design. Pretty neat effect. But pretty awesome, different things that we can do. And I always find alcohol ink backgrounds really funny. Like when you're doing it, you're like, that is a hot mess. It's disgusting. But when you go back to it, you're like, look at me, man, that is, you know what I mean? Right, see, right? You look at that and you're like, wow, that's a cool background. I, I might stamp on it, I might just leave it like that. So my advice, when you do alcohol ink, play like I play, really. Get yourself some Yupo. I would be honest, I wouldn't sacrifice a full sheet of Yupo. I'm a, definitely a half sheet kind of guy. So I take my Yupo, I like to cut it in half so I have a lot of different backgrounds. And just sit down with your inks and play. You don't have any other purpose other than creating things. If you're like, mm, that's good, set that one off the side to dry, start a new one. Don't sit there and fuss with the same one indefinitely because you might come back to it and be like, ooh, we're done, right? Or you might look and say, mm, I need to throw in another color or something like that. And before you know it, really, you'll have all of these beautiful, crazy backgrounds that you can cut up, you can stamp on, they could be cards, you can die cut, you can make mosaic tile, you could really do anything you want. And if you're playing around with lifting, I always encourage you to stamp. Even if you have no use for it right now, throwing that in your pile, you might look at that and be like, oh, that's gonna be really cool. I'll cut that and put it on the inside of a card and stamp it with a sentiment or a quote. And my advice is just play. And the alcohol inks with these new vibrant colors, these new alloys, and this crazy little thing that just moves ink around, I think just it's going to give us a whole new way to play with our alcohol ink. I can't wait to see even what people will do with this. I know I already had several makers in going, I want to use that on watercolor. You know, I want to brush my watercolor and instead of letting the watercolor dry to the end, I want to just move that watercolor back and forth. So that's what I think makes our industry so great. Our makers, right? People doing what we want to do. So. I use archival cleaner. Um, archival. 